This video is sponsored by Skillshare. In 1898, one of the heavyweights of archaeology at the time, Jacques de Morgan, was leading a dig at the site of the ancient Elamite city of Susa, today in southwestern Iran. In early antiquity, Susa had been one of the primary centers of Elamite civilization for millennia. It was only much later, when the city's glory days were far behind it, that it became one of the administrative capitals for the Achaemenid Persian Empire. While digging, de Morgan's team stumbled upon a large stela. De Morgan himself was extremely excited, because he thought he'd stumbled upon some important work of Elamite art. However, upon closer examination, it became clear that the stone object was not of Elamite origin at all, but rather from the land known as Babylonia a few hundred miles to the west, in Iraq. The stela was carved out of a slab of limestone and was just over 1.8 meters tall. Upon it was a giant figure carved into the stone, along with many soldiers, some of them marching in formation, while others were laid scattered, dead or dying, alongside a cliff. At first, due to his imposing demeanor and the horned headgear being worn, it was thought that the giant figure being depicted was perhaps some sort of god, but upon translation of the damaged Akkadian cuneiform characters inscribed upon the stela, it soon became clear who this mysterious man was. The inscription read, Naramsin the Powerful, Sidur and Situni, princes of the Lulubi, gathered together, and they made war against me. Naram Sin, the grandson of Sargon the Great, the founder of the world's first true empire. What was Naram Sin, or rather his stila, doing in Susa? Before we get into that though, I'd like to thank Skillshare, the sponsor of this video. I really wish that I had Skillshare when I was starting out because they have so many great courses where you can learn all sorts of skills to help you really create something unique and of value. I love that the platform has so many of YouTube's top creators with special exclusive courses that have projects that you can do so that you can take what you've learned and build something unique right away. Whether it's photography, filmmaking, audio engineering, graphic design, programs like Lightroom and Photoshop, whatever it is, if you want to learn some of the tools to help you unlock your creativity, then there's a Skillshare course for you. One of the courses that I recently went through is Storytelling Through Film, How to Create Engaging Videos for YouTube, taught by Thomas Dager of the hit channel, Yes Theory. Through that course, I've been learning a lot of interesting tips as to how to use more video footage to hopefully make these programs better for viewers. If you've always wanted to start a YouTube channel or just learn the basics of how to operate a camera, then Skillshare is definitely for you. The first 1,000 people who use the link in the video description will receive a one-month free trial to Skillshare Premium. So try it out and unlock your creative potential with Skillshare today. Reigning between the years 2254 to 2218 BC, Naram Sin was the fourth and probably the greatest king of what became known as the Akkadian Empire. When Naram Sin came to power in 2254 BC, the Akkadian Empire was in a sorry state. Its previous two kings, Rimush and Manishtushu, had just barely managed to keep together the state that their father, Sargon the Great, had built. Shortly after Naram Sin's coronation, numerous provinces of the empire broke out in full rebellion. Naram Sin would later in his inscriptions call this time the Great Revolt, and one by one he claims to have brutally put down every single rebellion. After consolidating his rule, Naram Sin expanded the borders of his empire into new territories, including to the north, into what is today the mountains of southeastern Turkey, and further to the east, to the Kingdom of Marhashi in southeastern Iran. These additional lands brought new sources of tribute, slaves, and for Naram Sin, glory. In fact, 
Naram Sin was so successful that both according to legend, as well as some of his own inscriptions found on temple artifacts, he began to think of himself as a god. This particular limestone monument that today we call the Victory Stela of Naram Sin was meant to commemorate his triumph over the Lulubi, also pronounced Lulubu, who were a people said to have lived somewhere along the western slopes of the Zagros Mountains. They're mentioned in earlier documents as being subjects of Naram Sin's grandfather, Sargon, and though it's not specifically mentioned, they may have been one of the many peoples who rose up in rebellion when Naram Sin became king. On the stela, the Lulubi are shown sporting short beards and braided hair, as well as wearing tunics with animal skins over their shoulders. They are in total disarray, and one can see their slain soldiers across the mountains. Those who are still alive are pleading for mercy, with one amongst their ranks, perhaps the Lulubi king Satuni himself, being humiliated by Naram Sin, whose foot rests upon the fallen combatant. Compare this, though, to the Akkadian soldiers, who appear to be disciplined and marching in formation. Along with conveying the might of Naram Sin, they're also a way of depicting the Akkadians as a civilizing force that have come to tame the savages of the mountains. Even in those days, city dwellers saw themselves as being sophisticated and civilized, and generally viewed those living in rural areas especially in mountain regions devoid of farming, as being primitive and uncultured. Now, of course, it's common for kings, emperors, even the presidents of modern countries to have themselves portrayed in art as these larger-than-life characters. But I think that relatively few would go as far as to portray themselves as a god. That's pretty much what Naram Sin does in this particular monument, Along with being at least double the size of anyone else portrayed in this scene, notice the headdress or crown that Naram Sin is wearing. It's reminiscent of those worn by gods that have been depicted in Sumerian, Akkadian, and later Babylonian and Assyrian art. Naram Sin wants whoever may be viewing this piece of propaganda to know that he is divine, or at least semi-divine much like the great hero Gilgamesh, who I'm pretty sure the artist working on this piece had in mind when this stela was first being designed. Naram Sin also pays his respects to other deities, as can be seen by what seems to be a sun or a star directly above the peak of the mountain. In the art of ancient Mesopotamia, this generally represents Shamash, the god of the sun and justice. Initially, this stela was probably placed in a temple or palace in the city of Sippar, which, along with being the patron city of the god Shamash, was in the heart of Mesopotamia. In the 12th century BC, the Elamite king Shutruknahunte launched a campaign into the land of the two rivers and sacked several cities, including Sippar. The stela of Naram Sin, which by then would have been over 1,000 years old, was taken to Susa as a trophy. In fact, Shutruk Nahunte says as much in his own inscription, which he had carved in Elamite on the stela. It reads, I am Shutruk Nahunte, son of Hatalush in Shushinak, beloved servant of the god in Shushinak, king of Anshan and Susa who has enlarged the kingdom, who takes care of the lands of Elam, the lord of the land of Elam. When the god in Shushinak gave me the order, I defeated Sippar. I took the stela of Naram Sin and carried it off, bringing it to the land of Elam. For in Shushinak, my god, I said it as an offering. The stela remained in Susa for the next 3,000 years, until Jacques de Morgan's team dug it up in 1898. Today, we can all view it in another great city, Paris, France, specifically at the Louvre. 
So that's the story behind the stila of Naram Sin. As always, thanks so much for stopping by. You all are great. I'd also like to really thank Grand Keck 69 Yap de Graf, Pasta Frola, Michael Lewis, Daniel Allen, Danny Van Eck, Wanex TV, Robert Morgan, Frank, Tim Lane, Candice Whipple, Brendan Redman, Faridun Dadachanji, Cher Cam, Farhad Kama, and all of the channel's patrons on Patreon for helping to support this and all future content. Check out the benefits to being a Patreon member, and if you'd like to join, feel free to click the link in the video description. You can also follow History with Sai on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, as well as listen to special audio programs on the History with Sai podcast. Thanks again, and please stay safe.